One of the most exciting ensemble companies in America today is the Open Theater. Their work, The Serpent, weaves the stories from Genesis with the contemporary themes of the assassinations of the Kennedys and Martin Luther King. The form of their theater and acting style is personal and complex, but they are always concerned with breaking down the barriers between the performers and the audience. I think one of the things that's kind of defined the open theater's approach, if anything, is it's been very pragmatic, kind of going step by step on each problem. And this is a particular problem, this thing of working with specific audiences, is a thing we haven't really reached yet. We're just beginning to feel it out. And what, the only way we're going to learn something about it is by doing it, you know, by going out into a prison, by going out into a factory, by going out into a suburb and doing it. It has been true up to this point that we've been relatively independent from uh, people's business, which has allowed us to make our own kind of theater and to make somewhat of a statement. It's not as strong as it might be politically, but it has been ours. Serpent typifies what is extraordinary about the open theater. But it made us anxious to know more about how they worked. We talked to the company, to the actors, to the directors, Joe Chaikin, Roberta Sklar. Into the davening, in davening jamming in a uh, circle. And we talked to Jean-Claude Van Atale, the playwright who had been a part of the company, about how the serpent had been created. It was conceived as a piece in which the actors would be priests, in a sense. That there would be a feeling of oneness, in the sense that the congregation feels that the priest is uh, questioning the same sorts of things that they're questioning. I didn't come to the serpent until it was two months in progress. And my job then was how to put some of the impulses that the actors had had and that Joe had had concerning Genesis into a shape that would be meaningful to an audience and into words because most of their original explorations were wordless. It's, it's an exploration of a feeling or it's a looking for a direction. The lines get rather blurred uh, in terms of who's doing what. Uh, the actors suggest words or reject words. They have ideas about how something should look. Joe does the directing, and each word that's in the serpent is written by me, except for the begats, which I stole from the Bible. Then the question becomes, how do you keep this excellent thing, which the actors have created, and keep it fresh, and also give it enough of a shape that it'll be recognizable and that it'll make the point that you want to make where you place it? One thing to do then, of course, is to give it words. Uh, not necessarily to put words in a person's mouth, but to give, for instance, the words in a narration, uh, or in a chorus, or different words to different actors. The word is one element, I think the most important element, in terms of shaping an impulse. It's always the top of the iceberg. It's always what clicks everything else into place. We were given problems, and we played around with them for a long time and then uh you know he joe or someone would say uh well it looks too heavy this way try to get it as though you know uh, electricity I'm, I'm making this up electricity were, were going off and on in you and and think of the pulse of uh, a heartbeat coming through you and so you'd wind up doing that it's not like you chose to go <gasps> You know what I mean? You don't pick it that way. When we started investigating the Garden of Eden, we tried to find 
having started from the book of Genesis, a description, and Hebrew myths, a description of the Garden of Eden, uh, we tried to find a connection for ourselves. What is the Garden of Eden for us right now? What is our Garden of Eden? And uh, someone brought up the idea that the Garden of Eden, for many of us at that time, was our, our workshop in a loft where we all met every day for four hours, where we trusted each other, where we enjoyed our work, where the work was stimulating and exciting for a period of seven months. Originally, when we began to work together at the Open Theater, there was, it was very nonverbal, sort of away from speaking. And that was because there were two ways of talking. One was you talk conversational, one-dimensional, sort of non-anything non way of talking. And the other was you talk stage talk. You talk in a certain full way, in what was, what was understood to be a beautiful sound in a such and such way. But that this was it. And for some reason, we felt that there was a lot in sounds and in uh, movement that was expressive that didn't have to do with either of those two things. And we try to dream up forms and exercises to get the actor to discover experiences of vocal and physical kinds. Because once he learns that there is a dimension of experience in this kind of expressiveness, then it's, it's sort of impossible for him not to want to develop that. There's, some, there's a point that I think should be made, is, is that the serpent is the actor's exploring something. It's the actor's questioning. It's not the actor's answering. Um, and they want the audience to join in that questioning, to participate in it, and to see the shape of the question. But they don't presume or attempt to provide a final answer, or even a provisional answer. Autopsy. With a single stroke of the cleaver, the corpse is split open. The fatty tissues fall aside in two yellow folds. In a corpse, the blood is black and does not flow. In a living person, the blood is black and flows from the liver to the spine, from there to the heart and the brain. To penetrate the skull, we shave the head and cut out a disc of flesh the shape of a half moon. We inject the exposed bone with a steel needle and push air into the skull to look into the brain. Then with a diamond drill we enter the bone and nibble at the opening with hammer, chisel and knife. The brain is green colored. It is a balance of chemicals. Thought is affected by traveling electrons. During a brain operation, pressing at this point with a knife causes live patients to exclaim at sudden memories. If we press here, we get fear. In gunshot wounds, infection ensues unless an operation is undertaken. We suck out bits of bone and fluent brain matter. If the patient survives, he may live for weeks or months or years. He functions barely. He is unconscious or semi-conscious, we don't know. We clean him and feed him, but there is no measure to what degree the mind imagines, receives or dreams. I no longer live in the beginning. I've lost the beginning. I'm in the middle knowing neither, neither the end nor, nor the beginning. I'm in the middle coming from the beginning. And going toward the end. I no longer live in the beginning. I've lost the beginning. I'm in the middle knowing neither, neither the, the end, end nor, nor the, the beginning. beginning. I'm in the middle coming from the beginning. And going toward the end. I no longer live in the beginning. I've lost the beginning. I'm in the middle knowing neither, neither the, the end nor, nor the beginning. beginning. I'm in the middle coming from the beginning. And going toward the end. Seven, eight, 
Eleven. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Two. Three. Four, five, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
I no longer live in the beginning. I've lost the beginning. I'm in the middle knowing neither, neither the, the end, end nor the beginning. beginning. I'm in the middle coming from the beginning. And going toward the end. Is it true that you and Adam, you and Adam, may do anything? Anything in the garden you may want to do? Is that true? We may do anything except one thing. What one thing? We are not allowed to eat from the tree. Not allowed to eat? We may not even touch it. Not even touch? Not even touch? Not even touch? Not even touch? Why not even touch? Adam said I would die. If you, if you touch, if you touch the tree, touch. 
if you touch the tree, Adam, Adam said. If you touch the tree, if you even touch the tree, Adam said you would die. But 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 have you died? Have you died? I don't know. You touched the tree and you haven't died. You haven't but Adam died. said. Adam said. Adam said. Adam said. Listen. Answer me this. Answer me this. Could it? Could it hurt more to eat to than, eat to, than touch? to touch? Could it? Could it? It is forbidden. Who has forbidden it? God. And, and why? And why is he forbidden it? Why does he set limits against, against you, you and Adam? Adam? Think. Is the fruit God's property? He says Adam and Eve may not eat. But are Adam and Eve guests in the garden? Are they guests? Don't they live here? May they not eat where they want? I don't know. Also, also, haven't you noticed? Haven't you noticed that the younger always have rule over the elder creation? Haven't you noticed that aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid and hadn't you better hurry and eat, eat the, the fruit, fruit now, now before the next creature comes to rule over you? I'm not afraid. She's not afraid. Why should she be? How could she be? She couldn't be. She doesn't know. Doesn't know what? She doesn't know she exists. Why doesn't she know it? Because she hasn't eaten. If she'd eaten, she would know. Know what? What worlds would she know if she ate? If what she world? ate, she would know. And if she knew, she, she, could. Could. she, she could. could. She 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 do you know? I don't know, but... but I can imagine. 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 Is what you can imagine what will be. How can you know until you eat? How can I know? How can I know until you eat? This garden. All these, all these animals, animals and, all, and all these plant plants were once, were once only, only imagined. 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 Shall I risk losing all these? It may be. It may be that no garden is better than this one. This garden. It may be. But you won't know. You can't know until you eat. How could you know? If I eat, and if I die, will you die too? If you die, I shall die too. Why do you want me to eat? Because I want. I want. I want to know. Know what? Know what you will know. Know what will happen. Know what you will know. Know what will happen. Know what you will know. Know what will happen. Know what you will know. Know what you will know. I might, I might do it, I might do it if God didn't know. You might, might do it if God didn't know. But you want to do it, and he knows you want to, is a crime. Only a crime. When you're caught. Is a crime. Only a crime. When you're caught. Shall I do what I want to then? Yes, yes. 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 And if what I want is to listen to God, and not to you. Yes, yes, yes. If, 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 you, if you want to. If you want to. If you want to. Yes, you want to. If you want to. Yes, if you want to. Yes, if you want to. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to. Yes, yes. If you want to. Yes, yes. If you want to. One, two. Yes. Then I will eat, because I want to. And Eve looked at the creatures in the garden, Arboil. and at the ground, Arboil. and at the wind Arboil. and the water. Arboil. And she said, I am not the same as these. Arboil. And she began to examine her skin, skin and her eyes and her ears and her nose and her mouth. And she began to examine her own mind. And Eve went to Adam to persuade him to eat. But Adam said, you have eaten of that which is forbidden and you shall die. Do you want me to eat and die too? But Adam ate. And he looked at the creatures in the garden, and at the ground, and at the wind and the water, 
And he said, I am not the same as thee. Uh, and he began to examine his skin and his eyes and his ears and his nose and his mouth. Uh, and he began to examine his own mind. Uh, uh, and Adam could neither spit out the fruit nor could he swallow it. He could neither spit out the fruit nor could he swallow it. Uh, not fall into sin. But as soon as this woman came, she tempted me and I ate. Woman, huh, you eat uh, the tree whereof I command you not to eat. It was the servant lord. He tempted me and I ate. You gave them a command and I contradicted it. Why did they obey me and not you? Because you have done this. You are cursed over all animals. Upon your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat. children are found to murder, you will make laws, but these laws shall not bind. 
you shall be made to think, and though few of your thoughts will exalt you, many of your thoughts will bring you sorrow and cause you to forget your exaltation. Now, shut up, come, a separation between the dreams inside your head and those things that you believe to be outside your head, and the two shall war within you. Accursed, you shall be alone, and whatever you shall think, and whatever you shall see and hear, you shall think it and see it and hear it alone. Henceforth shall you thirst after me. And in the day shall you endure the same longing as in the night, and in the night shall you endure the same longing as in the day. Henceforth shall you thirst after me. And your children shall live in fear of you. And your children shall live in fear of me. And your children shall live in fear of each other. Accursed, you shall glimpse Eden all the days of your life. But you shall not come again. And if you should come... And in the end... You shall not know it. The earth for that you could not obey shall wax old. The command lay upon you like a garment to more than one hour and shall be cast off. Accursed be your days by me. And forth shall you cry homeless and thirst after me. Now shall come a separation a curse. between the dreams inside your head a curse. and those things that you believe to be outside your head. A curse. In the beginning, anything is possible. I've lost the beginning. I'm in the middle. Knowing neither the end nor the beginning. I'm in the middle, coming from the beginning and going toward the end. One lemming. One lemming. One lemming. Sometimes I try to imagine what it's like to be somebody else. One lemming. But it's always me pretending. It has to be. Who else is there? I'm concerned. Because what you reject can still run your life. I hugged my child and what? sent him off to Lemmy. school with his lunch in a paper bag. And I wished he would never come home. I passed my friend on the street. I passed quite near. I don't think she saw me. But if she did, I don't think... She saw me see her. I think she thought... If she saw me... That I didn't see her. One lemming. If God exists, it is through me. And he will protect me because he owes his existence to me. Old stories have a secret. Fleming. They are a prison. Someone is locked inside. Sometimes when it's very quiet, I can hear him I breathing. I can hear him breathing. Whatever I know... I know it without words. It was different when I was a child. I don't see any more bright colors. One lemming. There are no solid blocks or familiar rooms. When asked, I blamed it on the other person. One lemming. It wasn't me, I said. It must have been her. I could have said it was me, but I said it was her. My home was Cleveland. Then what? I came to New York and I didn't have to account to anybody. I slept with men, I slept with women, I smoked pot, hashish, opium. What? I Let slept me. with a man and a woman at the same time, but I'm a gentle person and I collapsed. I'm still a child. So am I. Sometimes people nod at you and smile, and you know they haven't heard. On a certain day, of a certain year, one lemming starts to run. 
Another lemming, seeing the first, drops everything and starts to run too. Little by little, all the lemmings from all over the country run together for tens and hundreds of miles until, exhausted, they reach the cliff and they throw themselves into the sea. Hi, Hi. And the two shall war within you. You will use your mind not to understand, but to doubt. In and even if you should you understand, still will you doubt. Oh. And it occurred to Cain to kill his brother, but it did not occur to Cain that killing his brother would cause his brother's death. And it occurred to Cain to kill his brother, but it did not occur to Cain that killing his brother would cause his brother's death. And when they were cast out, even Adam remembered me, and Eve conceived and bore Cain, and she said, Lo, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And again, Adam and Eve remembered me, and Eve bore Abel, and again she said, Lo, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Then Eve had a dream, and she ran and told it to Adam, and Eve said, Lo. Lo, I saw Adam's blood flow from Cain's mouth, and wishing to divert an evil that might come, Adam separated Cain from Abel, and Cain became a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of the sheep, and in time Cain offered unto the Lord a sacrifice of first fruits, while his brother Abel offered a firstborn lamb. And the Lord had love for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering the Lord had no respect. And Cain said, why did he accept your offering and not mine? And Cain's face grew dark, and his words were not pleasing to the Lord. And Cain said, Why did he accept your offering and not mine? There is no law, there is no judge. And the Lord spoke within him, and God said, If you will amend your ways, I will forgive your anger. Yet even now the power of evil crouches at the door. But it occurred to Cain that the world is created through goodness, yet he saw that good deeds bear no fruit. And God said, It depends on you whether you shall be master over evil or evil over you. And Cain said, Why did he accept your offering and not mine? And it occurred to Cain that the world is ruled with an arbitrary power. And Cain said, There is no law, there is no, no judge. judge. Else why did he not accept my offering? And yet he accepted yours. And it occurred to Cain to kill his brother, but it did not occur to Cain that killing his brother would cause his brother's death. And this was the manner of Abel's death. For Cain did not know how to kill. And Cain struck at his brother and pulled his bones and broke them in turn. And this was the first murder. And Cain said, if I were to spill your blood on the ground as you do the sheep, who is there to demand it of me? And Abel said, the Lord will demand it, the Lord will judge. And Cain said, there is no law, there is no judge. Else why did he accept your offering and not accept mine? Why yours? Why not mine? And it occurred to Cain to kill his brother, but it did not occur to Cain that killing his brother would cause his brother's death. And this was the manner of Abel's death. But Cain did not know how to kill. Cain struck at his brother and pulled at his bones and broke them in turn. And Cain said, there is no law, there is no judge. Else why did he accept your offering and not accept mine? Why yours? Why not mine? And this was the first murder. And it occurred to Cain to kill his brother, but it did not occur to Cain that killing his brother would cause his brother's death.
In the beginning, anything is possible. From the center, I can choose to go anywhere. But now, the point toward which I have chosen to go has a line drawn between itself and the beginning. I no longer know the beginning. I'm in the middle. On a line between the beginning and a point toward which I chose to go. I have fewer choices now, because when I change my direction, the change can only start from a line already drawn. I'm collecting things. I'm buying plants and curtains with which to make a home. I'm buying things to make a good life. When I was 13, I wanted a house of my own. The girl I was then would say to me now, what have you done with your advantages? You could have married a rich man and had a big house. Instead of that, you're a freak. My husband is in that coffin. In the day he goes to work, in the evening, we discuss household matters, and at night he climbs back into the coffin. Even if you sit and do nothing, even so, your back is strapped to a wheel and the wheel turns. They can't tell. They can only approximate. They can't tell when you're really dead. Not exactly. Not the exact moment. It's my husband. He, he keeps me from it. It's his, his fault. He keeps me down, holds me at his, his level. I could be happy if it weren't for him. him. Open, close, separate movements, stretched out fingers, nails into skin. No matter how I try, these movements are not one. There's a stop between open and close, and between close and open. No effort makes these two movements one. Close. Open, close. You can see them having lunch. Their faces pale. Laughing. Their corpses laughing. You can see them on the street. Combed and brushed. They are they colored, are colored pictures. pictures. The men have killed each other. The king is dead. He was shot in the head by an unknown assassin. The men are dead. And no man can say of work or land, this is mine. The men are dead. We mourn we them. We mourn them. We are dead. We mourn ourselves. If a bulldog ant is cut in two, a battle starts between the tail and the head. The head bites the tail. The tail stings the head. They fight until both halves are dead. So man created God. What for? To set limits on himself. Would my dreams recognize me? Would they come to me and say, she's the one who imagined us? I was queen over a country where the air was sweet. We ate honey and fruit, and at night it was quiet. At the end, even after the end, even when the body is on its own, a human being can make such a variety of sounds, it's amazing. A field of dead men is loud. Teeth clack, bones crack, limbs twist and drop, and the last sound of all is a loud trumpet of escaping wind. And Adam knew Eve, and Eve knew Adam, and this was the first time. And this was the first time. And Adam knew Eve, and Eve knew Adam, and this was the first time. And this was the first time. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness and called his name Seth. And the and days of Adam after he begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. 
And, and Seth lived, lived 105 years and he begat Enos. And, and Seth lived, lived after he begat Enos 807 years and he begat sons and daughters. And Enos lived 90 years and he begat Cainon. And Enos lived after he begat Cainon 815 years and he begat sons and daughters. And Cainon lived 70 years and begat Mahalalil. And Cainon lived after he begat Mahalalil 840 years and he begat sons and daughters. And Mahalalil lived 65 years and he begat Jared. And, and Malalil lived and he began jotted 830 years and he begat sons and daughters. And, and Jotted lived 160 and two years and he begat Enoch. And Jotted lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And then Enoch lived 60 and five years and he begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and he begat sons and daughters. And then Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And Methuselah lived 180 years and seven and he begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and two years and he begat sons and daughters. And Lamech lived 180 and two years, and he got a son, and he called his name Noah. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 years, and he began sons and daughters. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, and Ham, and Jabez. And these are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old, and begat Ham, and Ham, and Ham, and Ham, and Ham, and And Ophlox lived 